This is the Simpit Driving School. I'm your instructor, Sean Cole, and today's lesson is all about understeer and oversteer. Now, this is still the beginning phases of our classes, so we're gonna keep things simple, and today's lesson is gonna be really about understanding these conditions and recognizing when they're going on. We will cover the cure for these conditions in later episodes and in our setup shop, but right now, we're really gonna focus as though you're in a beginner level series where you can't make a lot of adjustments to the car or perhaps you're running in a fixed series where you can't make any adjustments at all. And in either scenario, you might be delivered a car that has understeer or oversteer and as a driver, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Now let's start things off with a brief definition of each condition, starting off with understeer. Understeer, which is also called a push or being tight, is a handling characteristic of an automotive vehicle that causes it to turn less sharply than the driver intends because the front wheels slide to the outside of the turn before the rear wheels lose traction. Oversteer, which is the opposite and will sometimes be referred to as loose, is a handling characteristic of an automobile that causes turns that are sharper than the driver intends because the rear wheels slide to the outside of the turn before the front wheels lose traction. Now let's take a more detailed look at each condition, starting with my least favorite, that being understeer. Now a car that fights from understeer or a car that pushes into the corner can be an unbearable experience as the car fails to make corner grip at all. The car goes into the corner and as we request for steering, the car just keeps going through the corner. It plows, it just keeps pushing that sensation that you turn the wheel and nothing happens. But it is also predictable and slow and the way that most passenger vehicles are designed for safety reasons. Now under racing circumstances, it is slow, it is frustrating, and it can lead to many missed corners driving off the track to the outside. On a mechanical level, there are many things we can do to a car with understeer, and most of them will focus on getting more grip from the front end of the car. But once out on the track, there is very little a driver can do to compensate for understeer other than slowing the car down more before and during the corners. Weight transfer is a big part of the amount of grip that the front wheels can handle. And as a driver, we do play a role in this beyond the setup on the car. If you're locking up the front wheels, it makes it impossible for them to get traction for braking or for turn in. And this could be the cause of your understeer. And on the opposite side of things, if you're not braking hard enough, you might not be transferring enough of the weight forward under braking. This might not be letting the front wheels perform to their maximum. When fighting understeer on a medium to high speed corner that doesn't require braking, a more abrupt snapping off of the gas can actually force more weight forward on the car without brakes. This can be particularly helpful on certain oval situations where snapping off the gas will cause the car to rotate more. But if all else fails, your best option is going to be slowing the car down early enough and figuring out the maximum speed that the car can hold on the track. When you have adjusted your driving for the car's understeer, it will allow you to still make the apex and be able to get back on the gas early. On corner exit, our car can also push or suffer from understeer. Again, as we add steering input, the car refuses to turn and pushes wide off the track. And also, like on corner entry, there is very little you can do as a driver, but respect the limitations of the car. Limiting our acceleration and using throttle control will be essential in getting the most out of the car. Now, oversteer is the exact opposite condition, and most drivers are gonna tell you that it's pretty fun to drive with. In fact, if you ever see a driver doing victory donuts, or you see Ken Block doing his crazy Gymkhana, or you see drifting, the most elegant form of what is in fact oversteer with total control. Oversteer or being loose is when the rear end of the car loses traction before the front when cornering the vehicle. This sends the rear end around and instead of pushing off the corner like understeer, you actually over rotate to the inside of the corner. This is much more unstable and less predictable than understeer but it does allow the driver to get more out of the car and is usually the faster of the two conditions. If you remember in the words of Robert Duvall from Days of Thunder, When the rear end's loose, car's fast. Loose is fast and on the edge of out of control. 
a loose car is also typically more fun to drive and when done well can even be done with style. For a basic understanding of oversteer and what's going on with the car, as we go into the corner and we hit the brakes, the car starts to over rotate. The rear end starts to come around. Now what's great about being loose is that we have this moment, this blink of an eye where we can still save or correct the car and the key is counter steering. Now when the car starts to turn, we're turned to the right doing a right turn. When it starts to over rotate, counter steering is actually turning the car to the left, the opposite direction of what you'd intuitively think. And that is the key to saving a car when it starts to over rotate. When you're watching rally racing or drifting and you see the cars going sideways through the corners, you will also notice that the wheels are pointed in the opposite direction to counteract the forces of going around. When the car starts to regroup, it will be a combination of throttle control and bringing the wheels towards center until the car feels under control again. This is something that is actually fun and despite not being the fastest way around the track, it gives the driver the total feeling of maximum control on the car. When driving ovals, the cookie cutters in particular, when doing it best, you'll be slightly sliding the rear end through the corners and using steering and throttle control to get the best line and speed out of the corners. Now what makes oversteer more fun and ultimately faster around the track is that it still allows the driver a role in the outcome of the corner. You still have all of your controls available. You can still use the brakes, the gas and steering and all of them will affect what the car is doing. Comparing that to understeer, when basically your steering has been taken away from you, your ability to use the gas pedal has been mostly taken away from you, and you're left with only the brake and bleeding off speed in order to really make the corner. But as a driver, I want a perfectly balanced car, maybe just a little hint of oversteer to make it perfect for me. I hope this helps you understand oversteer and understeer a little bit better. Hopefully you'll be able to recognize these conditions and maybe respect them or drive around them as a driver out on the track. And in the future, when we get down to setting up the car, it's gonna be important to know exactly when and where on the track you're getting these conditions so that we will affect and change the right part of the car, focus our attention in the right ways. That's gonna be very important later on. If you have any questions, if you want to make any comments on this video, please go to thesimpit.com, put your comments with this video, and I tell you, I do my best to answer every single question on the videos at The Sim Pit. This is The Sim Pit Driving School. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.